everyone. My name is Kelsey Hawkins. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm an English MA student at Indiana University, Purdue University of Indianapolis. I've created this presentation for the WPA GO Summer Research Series to explore inclusive pedagogies that more comprehensively account for a population of writers that I will refer to as justice involved. My presentation draws on carceral pedagogies and research conducted by justice involved scholars in order to establish critical and socially responsible frameworks for researching and discussing the experiences of justice involved writers in higher education. I also hope that my presentation offers actionable pedagogical recommendations that you can incorporate into your own classroom practices in order to create a more inclusive environment for justice involved writers. I wanna begin by providing a workable definition of justice involved for those who may not be familiar with the term. While this descriptor has been defined in many different ways, I use justice involved to refer to any person who's experienced involvement with the criminal justice system as a defendant. While some definitions use justice involved to refer only to those who are or have previously been incarcerated in prisons, jails, or youth correctional facilities, I prefer the above definition because of how expansive it is attending more thoroughly to multiple forms of social regulation that extend beyond incarceration, like the parole and probation systems. In order for us to begin to account for this population in our pedagogical practices, it's important to understand how prevalent justice involvement is. The Marshall Project estimates that between 70 and 100 million Americans have a criminal record. Additionally, more than 650,000 people are released from carceral settings each year. Research demonstrates that successful social reintegration, including participation in educational and professional development, is integral to reducing a justice-involved person's risk of recidivism. Because higher education plays such an important role in reducing recidivism, increasing economic mobility, and uplifting individuals and communities, public policies at both the state and federal level have begun creating pathways for justice-involved individuals to better access post-secondary institutions. In 2015, the Department of Education's Second Chance Pell Initiative reinstated need-based financial assistance for incarcerated students at 63 institutions, and governments like the state of California's have begun allocating increased funding for support programs for previously incarcerated students. While this recent shift in policy increases justice-involved individuals' access to higher education, Research from academic affairs administrators indicates that instructors are often unaware of or unprepared to meet the needs of justice-involved students in their classrooms. In order to enhance our discipline's capacity to support justice-involved writers, it's important to consider the perspectives of justice-involved scholars, interrogate existing conceptions of justice involvement, and formulate new pedagogical practices to best support justice-involved writers. Literature on justice involved students' experiences in higher education offer two productive frameworks for constructing more inclusive pedagogies. Firstly, Royal Johnson emphasizes attendance to intersectionality as a more holistic and socially responsible way to engage justice involved students. Because many justice involved students occupy multiply marginalized positionalities, it's important for instructors to consider how factors such as race, gender, and socioeconomic class interact with justice involvement. It's also critical to note that the criminal justice system disproportionately impacts people of color. According to research conducted by the Vera Institute, Black people are incarcerated in state prisons at a rate five times greater than white people. Constructing more equitable and inclusive anti-racist classroom practices necessitates an attendance to the intersection of race and justice involvement. For these reasons, Johnson argues that institutional and pedagogical practices which do not consider the nuanced ways that justice involved students' experiences are shaped by their involvement with the criminal justice system as well as by race are unlikely to be truly inclusive. The second theoretical framework suggested by justice involved scholar Joe Louis Hernandez employs an anti-deficit perspective when working with justice involved students. Hernandez acknowledges the ways that literature on formerly incarcerated individuals often eschews a deficit perspective, focusing on barriers and challenges to academic success rather than the strengths that justice-involved individuals bring to their education. 
However, using a strengths-based lens allows instructors to recognize and appreciate what Melissa Abeta calls carceral capital, a form of cultural wealth used to describe the strength of justice-involved students' experiences. Hernandez and Abeta's research indicate that the first step to creating more inclusive pedagogies is to understand who justice-involved writers are, what strengths they bring to writing, and how best to engage them in classroom settings. The purpose of my research is to use an intersexual, anti-deficit framework to better understand justice-involved students' experiences with and perceptions of writing in order to develop more inclusive, supportive, and equitable pedagogical practices. In their article exploring the liberatory effects of a liberal arts education for incarcerated individuals, Deborah Appleman, Zeke Caligari, and John Vang found that writing forms a crucial component of justice-involved students' recrafted identity during their carceral education. Caligari, who identified himself as an incarcerated student at the time of the article's publication, reflects on his relationship to writing, describing its role in his identity formation as a justice-involved person. For Caligari, writing is a rehumanization process through which he was able to reconceive his own humanity and self-respect. Caligari notes how writing signified his inclusion in an ecology of human existence that extended beyond his carceral setting. It gave him the power to narrate his story in agentic and empowered ways, despite the constraints of his justice involvement. As Appleman et al.'s research demonstrates, justice-involved students may have an especially meaningful relationship to writing. Writing as both personal practice and social process allows justice-involved students to communicate their experiences and construct more emancipated identities. Therefore, it's crucial for writing instructors to begin theorizing pedagogical practices which respect justice-involved writers' unique strengths while situating writing as a potentially restorative or liberatory practice for students who have experienced justice involvement. Drawing from the frameworks and perspectives offered by justice involved scholars like Hernandez and Caligari, the first recommendation I offer for pedagogical application involves critical reflexivity. Critical reflexivity refers to the process by which one interrogates their own positionality, as well as the ways in which their identity informs their assumptions, actions, and interactions with others. As instructors, we need to examine the assumptions we make about justice-involved students and use critical reflexivity to deconstruct hegemonic pedagogical practices that may be informed by deficit perspectives of justice-involved writers. By reflecting on our own practices, we can make decisions to create more inclusive learning environments, like choosing to use humanizing language or explicitly designating your classroom or office as a safe and welcoming space for justice-involved students. These actions, by fostering awareness and open communication, can increase justice-involved students' sense of belongingness in academic spaces, allowing them to engage more meaningfully in coursework. In addition to creating more inclusive classroom environments, modeling critical reflexivity also facilitates students' critical self-reflection on their own experiences and attitudes. By assigning projects like literacy narratives or autoethnographies, Instructors can encourage justice-involved students to engage in writing as a liberatory process of identity formation like that described by Caligari. Reflective writing activities can be a restorative practice for those negotiating their identities as justice-involved students in higher education spaces. However, it's important to understand the gravity of self-disclosure for many justice-involved students and to be aware of the traumatic nature of some justice-involved students' experiences with the carceral system. While instructors should seek to create opportunities for safe self-disclosure, justice-involved writers should never feel pressured to disclose their experiences with their carceral system to instructors or their classmates. My final recommendation for classroom practice is to maximize agency for justice-involved writers through flexible assignment design and indirect feedback. Johnson's research as an academic affairs administrator indicates that justice-involved students often suffer a lack of choice during and after their carceral experiences. Therefore, choice can be an emancipatory and agentic for, a, for justice-involved writers in the classroom. Providing multiple options for assignment completion, making space for a variety of composing processes and practices, and acknowledging different ways to engage in coursework can foster justice-involved writers' sense of agency and self-efficacy. Additionally, Laura Hardin Marshall and Alexander Ocasio's experience providing access to writing center services to incarcerated students emphasizes the importance of affirming the rhetorical skills and strategies of justice-involved writers who are still developing their writerly identities. 
Marshall and Ocasio suggest using non-directive feedback in order to increase justice-involved writers' sense of autonomy over their writing practices. Feedback that encourages students to reflect and engage in inquiry, proposes questions or problems, and offers options for revision allows students to develop their confidence and agency as writers. I hope that you were able to find some of the recommendations from this presentation helpful in your own pedagogical context. I've included my contact information here for anyone who would like to discuss any of the information covered in more detail. You can also use the QR code provided to access the slides and a transcript of this presentation. Thank you.